All right, let's get this show on the road. First, uh, just a welcome to everybody. I'm glad to be able to talk to you. Uh, this is kind of a strange way to do it as far as I'm concerned. I'm uh, much more used to, to talking to groups of people live and having some interaction, which will be fairly limited in this context. Um, as far as the tools that we have here for our interaction, I, I'm going to be setting my display so that I will be looking in the Q&A uh, rather than in the chat. So if you have questions, please post them there. Um, and you can gossip about me all you want in the chat, and I probably won't see it. Um, I'm, I'm Mike Bailey. Uh, I'm a blockchain architect for Paramount Software Solutions. I'm also an assistant professor at Utah State University. So I just have to mention, go Jazz, just, you know, because that's where I'm from, right? And, uh, and, and for those of you who are really not sports fans, they're, they're in the NBA playoffs right now and doing very well. All right, uh, so today what I'm going to be talking about are predicate proofs. Uh, and, and I kind of consider them almost a superpower. When we talk about zero knowledge proofs, what people uh, here in the community in particular tend to think about is, is uh, controlled disclosure, where if I have a credential that has lots of different fields in it, maybe I just, I'm going to share one field with you. Predicates takes it to a whole new level beyond that. So, so I'm gonna introduce, for those of you who aren't already familiar with what predicate proofs are, I will introduce them and uh, give you some tips on how to use them. But I'll actually just mention uh, towards the end, I'm going to be throwing a monkey wrench into the whole thing that I think everybody needs to be aware of as far as uh, predicate proofs and, and their use. All right, so let me get to the right screen. Okay, so what I will be covering today is, uh, well, first of all, what are predicate proofs? I'll, I'll give you a, a more detailed answer to that than what I just gave that quick introduction. And, uh, and, and I'll discuss where they're at as far as, you know, what technologies are using them, challenges in applying them, and uh, how, how they're used. And, and then finally, I'm going to be talking about the future of predicate proofs, which, which is very much in flux. Okay, so to begin with, zero knowledge proofs are to be able to convey data, but only the absolute minimum required. So this is one of the key tools that we are uh, that we use when we're trying to preserve privacy. Um, typically, almost everybody who gives a presentation talking about this type of thing, they give the driver's license example and show all the driver's license data and, and how if you're just trying to buy a drink in a bar, when you hand somebody your driver's license, you're giving them far too much information that could be compromising your privacy. I, I've decided I'm going to do this a little different. I'm going to show you a, a, a graduation, a, a transcript type, type of, um, of example where uh, you want to be able to prove that you graduated. Okay, so if I have my transcript, this is what everybody, when you apply for a job, uh, a lot of places they'll say, okay, give me your transcript so that I can see uh, that you graduated and, and whatnot. And what you're handing them is a lot of information, a lot of which your employer probably neither wants nor needs, and, and maybe some of it might even be embarrassing. Uh, what if all your employer wants to know is, did this person graduate so that I can hire him uh, and be able to brag about having a car, uh, car wash employee who is a college graduate? All right. Well, you hand them the transcript and add your graduation date, uh, grades for all the courses taken, which um, might be embarrassing and not required. Uh, if you went off and uh, uh, decided to traipse around the world and and, uh, and got stuck uh, in, in some third world country jail for a while or something like that, 
There might be unexplained periods of absence that are in your transcript that you aren't required if all you're trying to do is show that you graduated. Uh, your GPA, your major, you know, what if you're uh, maybe not real comfortable with the, the fact that you were desperate to graduate and so you dropped out of civil engineering and went into basket weaving instead to graduate? Well, telling people your, your major is not required. And maybe your scholarships and, and uh, Pell Grants and things like that might be on there. Not required. All you really need, perhaps is if, if we're doing controlled disclosure type of zero knowledge proofs, perhaps I could give them just the graduation date field from my transcript. That would show that I actually did graduate. But what if you're old like me? Maybe you don't even want to show the graduation date because um, everybody will deny it, but we all know, especially if you're in the tech world, that um, that there is a little bit of age discrimination that goes on out there. Maybe you don't want to show that you graduated in, uh, in 1990 or something like that. You'd, you'd rather be assumed to be a little bit younger. So you don't even want to give them the graduation date. So the basic zero knowledge proof that will just selectively disclose just one field will get you part of the way there. But this is why I am saying that the predicate proofs are the, the superpower because they will not even disclose the graduation date. All they're going to say is that you graduated and it's verified. Now, so this is a bullion. What we're generally anticipating as a result of a predicate proof is just a bullion, a yes or no. Question comes into your, your, uh, your digital wallet, says, did this person graduate? And the only thing that comes back is yes or no. And, and it's verified. What I mean by this is that the, uh, the, the transcript came from the university. It was issued by the university. It was signed by the university. And we know that we could give them back we, we could demonstrate to somebody that we have this transcript that is digitally signed by the university, but isn't it much better if I just give them a boolean yes or no, but be able to trace back um, the, the boolean value as being derived from something that was digitally signed by the university and not just me saying it. Okay, so this is what predicates give you. They're the superpower. They're the advanced zero knowledge proof that are able to just give you a, an answer to a yes or no and have it so that the it is verified through cryptography as being derived from a credential that is provided from uh, a, a trusted source. So that's where we're going with this. And that, that really is a really nice uh, capability, right? Okay, different things that we might want to be able to uh, and have yes or no answers to is basically what this is, slide is talking about. So these are potential predicate objects. For example, you must be 50 to join AARP. Can you, is that derived down to a yes or no answer? Yes, okay, so this is something that if you have a credential, you could check an age on a credential and see that you're, you're 50 or older, you can join AARP. But notice how cleverly I'm still shying away from the, uh, you know, 21 to buy a drink type of example. All right, height. If you had something that, a uh, credential from the DMV or something that says uh, you're this tall, well, you could prove height. Or if you had weight, Insurance discount if you have a body mass index less than 28. Okay, so so that would be something you could do a true or false and provide a predicate proof on. Uh, this last one is actually one that a customer of mine was interested in. Uh, they were actually the other way around. They they said we service the following states. We don't really want to know which state they're in. We just want to know that they're from one of these states. Can I give you a, a list 
of, of states and, uh, and have a predicate come back and say, true or false, this person is in one of your service area states. Okay. Or uh, as this example here says, offer void. If you're in a select state, you can, you can reverse that. So these are potential predicate objects or examples of them. So, so really they boil down to, I came up with these. If anyone else uh, can, can think of other things, these are the ones that I've seen customers come to me and say, hey, I would like a predicate that does this sort of thing. So for example, um, greater than or less than would be if you're over 50, if you're over 21, uh, those types of numerical type of, of greater than, less than are examples of, of predicate type of um, operators. Equal to is, is another one. It, you know, uh, yes or no, it needs to be exactly this. Is a member of, so that would be the, the state example I just used, right? Need, uh, be a member of this set. This would be something, once again, you could get an up or down, a predicate, uh, Boolean type of result of it. Oh, um, possession, where you have a credential, and they don't really care about what's in it, but they just want to know that you have one. Um, I guess an example would be if you're trying to prove somebody is a citizen of the United States. Well, one way to tell that would be if they have a social security number. Maybe you don't really even want to know their social security number, but just tell me, do you have a credential with a social security uh, from the social security administration? And if so, they're a citizen and you know, things go forward. So just possession of a credential. These are all things that can be answered with a true or false bullion type of uh, response. So this is what we would like to have. Um, we don't necessarily have that in our current implementations. Let, let's talk about what we do have. Well, the, the first uh, thing I ought to mention is one of the reasons that we're here at a Hyperledger conference talking about this is that we do predicate proofs in current Hyperledger Indy and Aries implementations. Okay, so state of the art, we, we, we have this, but there is a limitation on what we have right now. All we have implemented are numeric. So if I want to see if somebody is a member of a state or something like that, a member of a set like that, that isn't you know something that can be just uh, defined numerically, um, current implementations, you're out of luck. Um, I can tell greater than or less than. That's pretty much it. Okay. It's based on uh, CL, Comenish. Uh, I'm, okay, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm going to hack this. I'll just say the, it's based on sealed signatures. Um, and uh, re reading through a, a, a recent uh, document put out by, um, by a, a identity woman, um, she uh, she said this, JSON ZKPCL generates a numeric representation of each field, and then signs both the numeric and text representation of the statements using a seal signature. I, uh, so what this is basically saying is that we we are going to the degree that we actually are are signing things twice in order to make this thing work in these implementations in Indian Aries one of which is a numeric representation. And that allows us to use these predicates in order to do it. So, so there are some, there are certainly limitations on what the current Im implementations of predicate proofs provide. Will it be able to tell if I'm over 18 or 21? Yes. Uh, will it be able to tell if I am a, a, a citizen of a particular state? not without some fairly spectacular gyrations in how your credentials are issued. Um, it's, it's not going to happen. Now, I would like, 
even for, even for dates, even for things like am I over 21, there are some limitations in that I can't just put a text rep representation of my birthday in somewhere. Um, so, for example, even if we use the most computer slash human friendly format for uh, for representing dates. I, I like the ISO 8601 format. Okay, it puts the year first and then the month and the day. So this is today's date. And as long as a person knows what to expect, that's pretty human readable. And it's also very good for representing things in a way that computers can operate on them because this is uh, in a uh, little Endian format that is able to be, uh, you know, I, I could I could put that into an ASCII or a UTF-8 representation like I did here. And if this was 2021-0609, that would just increment that last little eight in hexadecimal to a nine. And I can easily tell with a computer, I can say, is this greater than or less than? And um, and and that will work for me. However, um, the current implementations of what is in Indian Aries doesn't even do this. As soon as you put those little dashes in there, then Indies and Indy and Aries uh, implementations will say, well, that is a text string that is not a numeric. And so if you try to do a predicate proof, it will fail. So there are definitely limitations on the current implementation. And, and actually, when I first uh, proposed this little presentation, that was going to be the thrust of my entire presentation, is that we need to fix it so that we could take text like this, convert it into just a hexadecimal re representation of it, and we would be able to if, if we if we just tweak Indian areas just a little bit, we would be able to do predicate proofs on strings like this that are also human readable, because dates is one of the main thing that everybody wants this stuff for. Um, but that being said, um, as you'll see later in the presentation, some of the, my reasoning has has been overcome, and we're we're going to go on and and leave this for now. Just realize that there is that limitation right now. I'm going to do a brief little um, demonstration of a way to work around this to some degree, right? So say that I want to get a transcript. I didn't put all these for my little demo here. I didn't put all the different fields that I put uh, in my initial slides. Um, I, I just put graduation date, GPA, and major. And okay, and I want to be able to prove that I've graduated before or after a certain date. Okay, now in order to do this, I'm going to add an additional field to the credential. I'm going to call it a date code. You can see it's really the UTF 8, except that I omitted the dashes. All right, and so if I do it like this, I can issue a predicate proof on that date code. Okay. So this is somebody has issued to my wallet a, a request to see whether uh, I have, wh whether the date code is greater than or less than 1990 with all zeros. That should be able to, basically that tells if I have graduated since 1990. Okay. And, and this is acceptable, this will work. And, you know, it will compare this to this and it will give you a, uh, a, a bullion response that is traceable to the original credential that was issued by the university and um, will tell whether somebody graduated since that date. And okay, so there's a, there's a workaround, but it ends up with a person having kind of mysterious stuff in their credentials, like what in the world is this date code thing? Okay, if it's, it's not something that is immediately recognizable as a date. 
and and it, you have to have a graduation date and that rather than just having one or the other. All right. So there, there's there's the and and this is actually working code here. I'm not going to take the chance of of it in the um in this little presentation. That's very brief, but but. We, this is implemented. This is uh, a wallet implemented on top of Ares. All right. So, what's changed that made me want to say I, I've got to redirect this this presentation a little bit? And that this is what's changed. The community is moving away from CL signatures and moving towards JSON LD with BBS plus signatures. Okay, Ares is getting that that implementation is active and ongoing. It's one of the most exciting things happening in the Ares community right now. And here's the bad news: Predic proofs are going to be a casualty of this. I, I learned this after I proposed this presentation, but I think this presentation is still worthwhile because I think it's going to be a temporary thing. They will be back. Um. Now, why are they a casualty of it? Well, it's um, talking to some cryptographer friends, and I will not put my myself in that camp, but talking to some cryptographer friends, they are doable, but it's just going to be something that's on the backlog for the time being. It's, it's uh, uh, not something immediately obvious, and they're going to have to go away and... and, and figure it out okay so what do we have with the json ld why are, why are we moving to json ld and bbs plus well one of the things about the cl signatures is they require you to publish on uh, to generate ahead of time and publish onto the uh the blockchain or whatever um wherever you're holding such data schemas um, with the JSON LD then that it's no longer necessary to publish schemas in advance because you the, the schemas and cred defs I, I guess I should say credential definitions the these credential definitions um, are basically all the keys for every field that go into the uh, the credentials that you're going to issue and so each individual field, each individual attribute has its own key set. And, and those are all being put into this, um, in, into these credential definitions that need to be stored somewhere. With JSON LD and BBS Plus, there is a deterministic key expansion. All you have to do is store one key for the entire credential class that you're going to issue. Uh, so you don't have to store these large uh, pre-computed credentials that have lots of individual keys in them. So that's an advantage. The biggest advantage is probably the rich tech, uh, rich document for, uh, format, RDF, that allow, allows hierarchical schemas. So if you have a schema that somebody has come up with for, um, for something and then somebody wants to incorporate that schema into another schema, JSON LD will support that. Uh, I, pers I particularly like the multilingual capabilities because if you think of it, you could if you have hierarchical schemas, you could have uh, a base schema and then have okay a uh, another schema that is going to incorporate that for English, another and, and it's also going to incorporate it for Spanish, and it's also going to incorporate it for Bengali and have multiple copies of the same schema one for each language that you're going to issue credentials in. And um, that, that way, uh, this, this will provide multilingual capabilities in your credentials. So that, that's a wonderful thing. Um, JSON-LD still will support the attribute level disclosures, excuse me, JSON-LD with BBS plus, that combination, will continue to support selective disclosure as far as only needing to give um, a, a one attribute out of an entire set of attributes in a schema, in, excuse me, in a credential. 
so so that is another uh, capability that is still there. So you could, if we go back to the previous example, um, you could give the graduation date without disclosing all these other fields. That is still supported in the JSON-LD EBS Plus. Okay. Um, and here's something that kind of excites me when I talk about predicate proofs is that if I if I have something like this, I could have it uh, same way I have multilingual capability. I could have one copy inside my parent scheme, my overall schema that is English or, or human readable. And I could have another copy of the same attributes uh, within that uh, credential that I'm issuing that's machine readable, mach uh, all numeric, such that it could be used for predicate proofs. So that would, uh, in a way, this JSON LD BBS plus type of um, uh, movement that is happening in the community in the long run could be better for predicate proofs because once we figure out how to do predicate proofs with these signatures, we can have things expressed, the, the exact same value expressed in multiple ways, including ways that would be useful for predicate proofs. Um, so, uh, for example, um, going back to this, I wouldn't have to show a separate date code I could have in my credentials, I'm displaying to the user the values in human readable format, but I could have hidden in my same credential the exact same values for the exact same fields in a more machine readable format such as this. And that would uh, be supported now with the JSON LD. Okay. So I'm seeing great uh, potential here. I, I'm putting out a call for cryptography credentials to get the BBS signatures working for, uh, for predicate proofs. So in conclusion, I'm nearly at the end of my time. A limited form of predicate proofs exists in Indian Aries. They, uh, but they are going to be lost until we figure out how to do predicate proofs for BBS plus signatures, which is, I'm told, is doable, but needs to be uh, added to the to-do list. And potentially, they will be better than ever when this happens. Okay, I have allowed an entire two minutes for question and answer, if anyone has any. And... Uh, um, if not, then I appreciate you attending this session, and, uh, and and I hope you're excited about some of these neat privacy preserving things like I am. I, I'll ask a quick question real quick and answer it myself. Okay, this is Hyperledger. There's a blockchain conference. Why do we care about this type of thing? Well, Indies, uh, Indy, Hyperledger Indy, has historically stored credential uh, type of metadata, the different types of keys and such needed for digital signatures, uh, the public part of those keys onto a blockchain, the ND uh, project in particular. And uh, so so this, this particular project, even though a lot of it seems like it is external to a blockchain, it has originated in Hyperledger. We're ahead of the rest of the world in a lot of this stuff. And it's exciting stuff. And it still has, there are still a lot of indie ledgers like Sovereign and things that are out there. Okay, there's a question answer. Any, any others? We're at the top of the hour. Thank you, everybody. Oh, wait, one. Okay, so as far as indie, there's two different types. Uh, the question is, is there development in Indy for JSON LD BBS plus? Uh, there's two different parts of Indy. There's the Indy SDK. And Indy SDK, which is the part that was used to be used to develop agents, it really is not being 
continue to be developed much anymore. Uh, then there's the indie as far as the ledgers um, that are used to, to store the public keys. And uh, there will not be a, uh, much need for any development on the indie ledger. Um, so there, indie, the, the sovereign ledger, the indie ledgers will continue to be useful with JSON LD BBS plus uh, into the future. Uh, I don't anticipate there being a need for a lot of change there. Aries, on the other hand, uh, is, is going to be changing a lot. All right. Thank you, everyone.